of the living. It is. Ooh, it is. it's been some time mm-hmm. since we've been back together. Just you and I. Yep. And it's a pleasure. Likewise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my beautiful bride, my girlfriend, mm-hmm. my woman. Monday through Thursday, or Monday through Friday morning, she's the wife. Oh. Friday through Sunday evening, she's my woman. And so today we're going to be pastors. We're going to add a little twist to it and call us still married, still husband and wife, but we're pastors. And so tonight we have the privilege, the honor to come back before you. It is excitement. It's been some time that I've sat behind the sacred desk, a little over almost two months going on that I've sat behind the sacred desk and actually did any teaching or preaching. It has been some time that I've taken to um, be fed back and some time to relax and to refocus and focus on the strategy for 22. And we've had some capable men and women that has carried us along. So why don't you give those men and women on Wednesdays and Sunday a round of applause, the music team, the worship team, all the production Mm -hmm. team who's made everything possible. And give yourself a round of applause for your contributions for making everything possible. Because if it wasn't for your sacrifice, if it wasn't for their contributions, if it wasn't for their love, it would have been possible to continue this work through COVID. We're coming out of this thing, y'all. We're coming out. We're coming (laughs) out of this thing. There's been some things that's been put on hold. There's some things that's been that's been in the back in the background and been on the back burner. But in 22, I believe that God is going to release the church. And whenever He released the church, she's going to come forth with much power. Yes. And much of my, she's going to do miracle signs and wonders. She's been in an incubator state. Okay. Now, there's still some things that takes place because even when you're in incubation state, there still has to be some nutrients that take place mm-hmm. in order for the thing that's inside of the incubation to live. And so there's been some miracle signs and wonders that have taken place. There's been some nurturing that's been taking place, but moving forward. Mm-hmm. Can someone say forward? Forward. This is the year of demonstration. The year of and demonstration. And one of the ways that we make this happen, demonstration is a reciprocal thing from God. God wants to see us move first. And mm. whenever we move, he moves just like that. Right. And so we're under the year of demonstration. And again, thank God for all of you um, being patient and loving on us. But tonight, someone say tonight. Tonight. Tonight we have another teaching. We're in the book of love. Mm. We're in the book of love. We come out of, you know, uh, right around Christmas time and, you know, we finished out the the book of Revelations and we took some time and now we're going into the book of love. And it is it is no happenstance that we are in the book of love while we're going through Lent. Lent is all about recognizing Jesus and loving Jesus. And John is the book of love. It is recognized. He's recognized as the the exam, the, uh, the evangelist and the apostle mm-hmm. of love. Mm-hmm. John the Revelator is a love person. Mm-hmm. And so tonight as we, you know, go through this book, you know, Pastor Ursula, in just a few moments, she's going to recap what those ladies have done in the chap- this first couple, first chapters, and then we'll pick up on chapter two. But John is amazing. A, an amazing book. <laughs> and so even after we finish these chapters in the book of John, we're going to go to John 1, 2, and 3 because we need to see in his infancy state. Mm-hmm. And then we need to see further along his mature state. Oh, that's because good. there's some things that whenever you're in your infancy state that you don't get or that you don't understand until you walk into maturity. Right. I don't behave the same way whenever I was three as I do when I was 30. And then I don't behave the way that I was 30 like I do when I'm 50. And so there are definitely some advantages that we're going to learn throughout the book of John. And so I want to say again, thank you for your attentiveness. And while you're here, why don't you take this few moments If you're excited about what you're getting ready to hear, if you're excited about this Life Worship Center, your pastors, you're excited about the work here, why don't you take the next 30 seconds and share this link with at least three people so that at least three other people can be blessed by what God is going to do tonight because there is some revelation and some illumination that we will share tonight that God is going to download through these old jars of clay. Mm -hmm. Amen? And where it's truly truly excited 
Can someone say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor Ursula, would you please share the honor of giving us prayer? Amen. Father, we give holy credence to your divine written word, and it is that that we stand on tonight. Jesus. We decrease that you increase. Illuminate Hallelujah. yourself from the parsonets as we share with those who are partaking. On this night, God, we ask for divine revelation. Meet us where we are, and we'll be so careful to give you the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless. Thank you. And Praise so, Lord. again, we, Pastor Ursula, you know, we're getting ready to go into, you know, the teaching um, chapter two. Um, would you give us a summary of what we learned from chapter one? Amen. 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 Well, if, if I could summarize chapter one, um, the, the, the simplest way to, to uh, sum that up is to basically transition us from the word of Christ into the works of Christ. Amen. So chapter one was about who Christ is. He now comes on the scene as the Messiah. John the Baptist is there in the field. He's waiting for him. He baptized him. A dove descends upon him as an angel. And it is now publicly recognized that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Amen. Chapter 1 takes a, a, a verbal, I would like to say that chapter 1 takes a verbal testimonial, not just from John decreeing that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, but those who follow him. Amen. He named some four individuals, and including himself will be five, but he named some four individuals that you're going to talk about. And I think you plan to elaborate a little bit about his posse, his crew. You always his, have his to now. have somebody. Oh, you him. can't do this work by yourself. So let me help you. If you think this is hard, it is. And it's harder if you try to do it by yourself. But there are some that were recognized here um, during his public display or his inauguration, I should say, mm -hmm. um, they are recognizing that he is the Messiah. So if we look at chapter one, we could pretty much sum it up as a verbal testimonial mm -hmm. of who Jesus Christ is. And now we're getting ready to go into the works. So we're moving from the word of Christ into the works of Christ. And this is so interesting that we go into this with one event. We're only talking about one event tonight. This one, one event, event has many outcomes. Maybe I should say it that way. Many outcomes and many firsts. Many outcomes and many firsts. Amen. Amen. And, and that's the way the word of the Lord is. You, God can speak one word to one person yes. and have multiple and many, many different deliverances. And this is what we're going to attempt to do tonight, show you through God's word how he works. Amen. Right. So, Pastor Ursula, give us a recap of uh, chapter one. Um, so I just took us from um, chapter one. I okay. summarized it as being the verbal testimonials. Okay. Um, per first professing from John the Baptist, mm -hmm. um, who is an apostle, and then um, bringing on the disciples, a few other disciples mm -hmm. um, who also share that testament. Um, so if we like to, should we go ahead and jump into the word? Let's jump into the word. But okay. before we get there, I want to just give a, a small, um, because I like, I like history. Okay. And so I, I like want to talk about where we are tonight. Um, as far as the history, the, the area of where we are, um, first thing I want to do is, is speak to those who control the air in this building to get <laughs> us some fan. Woo! Pastor Ursula is perspiring. I'm Woo! perspiring. Let's make sure we get on the stage fans. <laughs> let's adjust the air in the house. Amen. So let's make sure, help us out it's so that we can deliver God's word. Here. How many of you know that there has to be something, you know, some, some type of uh, some comfort or some type of, you know, to make things easy for us so that we can deliver God's word. Let's get it on. Um, uh, but I want to talk about just the surrounding area where we are and those who are involved. Mm -hmm. So we want to talk about Cania of Galilee. Uh, Cana, Cana, Cana was a small uh, Jewish village mm -hmm. just outside of Galilee. Um, it was an Israelite. It was between uh, Judea and Samaria, and it was not to be confused with some of the other areas that were called Cana because mm -hmm. in the Bible there was, thank you so much, yes. there are different areas that were called Cana in the Bible, 
Um, Cana from the Hebrew word means need. Can someone say need? Need. Everybody needs something. So it's, it's ironic that during this time, mm -hmm. Jesus is going to this wedding, and there's going to be the first or one event, but many first. Yeah. And it's primarily known for, you know, of course, John Gospel, um, it, you know, with the place where Jesus done his first couple of miracles. We're going to talk about that tonight. The, and then I want to talk about who Jesus' posse was. And so at this time, you know, in, in verse chapter 1, we learned that Jesus picked up a few of his disciples. The first one I want to talk about is, is Nathaniel. And he found Come Nathan on, Nathaniel. Nathaniel was from this area. And so he had a direct connection with what was taking place in this area. How, you know, ironic it is for someone to reach out to the, some of the locals. I know that even whenever, you know, in business, we, you know, we would grab some of the uh, the hourly employees to just to make sure that if we're doing something or we're changing uh, the, pr the process, the way we're doing things, we want to include people who have been doing it or the ones who know about the area. Right. And Nathaniel was from the area, so he knew that he knew what was taking place. He knew some of the people there. He knew the culture. He knew some of the other disciples. He knew Philip, which I want to talk about second. And Philip was also a disciple who Jesus picked up, not to be con to confused with the apostle Philip, but the evangelist Philip. And so Philip was very instrumental inside of this, this, um, this during this time. Philip was one of the ones that was with Jesus um, throughout his ministry. He was also one of the guys that was in the upper room. The next person I want to talk about is Andrew, and Andrew... Um, of course, was Peter's brother. Mm -hmm. Andrew was one of the first disciples that Jesus called. Mm -hmm. um, some say that he was there, of course, along with Nathan as John the Baptist mm -hmm. um, um, disciples. But we also knew that Andrew had a business along with his brother Peter. Mm -hmm. They had a fishing business. And so Jesus is gathering the people around. Yes. Because in order for God to demonstrate, you have to have witnesses. You have he to. said among two or three witnesses. And so now That's he's right. gathering his team members. And then I want to talk about John. Mm -hmm. John is uh, the son of Simone. And Simone is Mary's sister. Mm. And so John is Mary's niece, I mean nephew, which he is Jesus' first cousin. They kin folks. Kin folks. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to take kin folk along with you because sometimes blood is thicker than water. Oh, yeah. Amen. So I just wanted to give you a short summary of where they were. Mm -hmm. They were going to a wedding in, in Cana. Jesus has been invited. According to the historians, has been Three days since the conversation that he's had with Nathan. Mm -hmm. However, the three days that he had with Nathan is actually six days after the baptism of Jesus Christ. Wow. So it's still within his first week of, of being recognized and being called to the front. And so whenever God calls you, he doesn't need a lot of time to prepare you. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be prepared before he calls us. Right. So don't wait for him to call you to try to be prepared, get prepared before he calls you. I even tell folks, even on the job, the, the promotion comes before you get the job or the pay comes. Do the job first, then the promotion will come. And so um, that's where we are as of right now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So let's read through. Uh, the two. first, yep, but let's go through the verses where we're going to be tonight. Okay. Um, tonight's text will be taken from St. John chapter 2. We will read verses 1 through 11 throughout the night, but for starters, we'll start with verses 1 and 2. So if you're following with us in whatever version of Bible you use, um, we'll be taking tonight's text from John chapter 2. I'm going to start with chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Amen. 
And so again, we, we have a wedding that's taking place. Mm -hmm. Which is tonight's first point. Which is tonight's first because point. Because this is the only event. Remember, this you're going to walk away with some only extras, but we're only talking about one place. event. <laughs> and so how fitting for this coming out party mm -hmm. for Jesus to take place other than a wedding. And it also symbolizes the first institution that God created was the marriage. Right. And so now that Jesus is coming to the forefront and God has just announced his son after God, you know, created heaven and earth and he created man and woman mm -hmm. and he put them two together because he said it is not good that man and woman should be alone. Oh, now not. Jesus comes to the scene and the first place he goes to after his baptism is to a wedding. Wow. Wow. Not only does he go to a wedding, he gets an invitation to He the gets wedding. an invitation to uh, the wedding. Because there's a lot of weddings that people don't get invited to. And so this is the wedding of the decade. This is the largest social phenomenon that's going on. This is the who's who, who who's who is going to be there. The most influential people in the town are there. This is the place everybody wants to be. And, that, and here's the reason why is because the Jewish weddings mm -hmm. normally lasted from a week to average of two weeks, sometimes even longer. Wow. And so they have planned, they have put out the invitations, they sent out all the, the decorations, the husband and wife have gotten together. And here's mm. the thing about the wedding. So, and the, the Jewish customs with it during this time, mm -hmm. the groom and the bride would have already been married. 